Hey, this is Pastor Bungie Garrett, and I want to take this opportunity to present you with another word of encouragement. Well, I wanted to take a little time this morning just to consider a few headlines that caught my attention. You know, according to one headline, apocalyptic smoke from wildfires in Canada have engulfed New York City and the East Coast. That's right. It's apocalyptic smoke, you know, from the Canadian wildfires, which have actually triggered air quality alerts in several cities, not only including New York City, but also Baltimore, Boston, and Minneapolis. And with that, I can't help but to wonder, is this the right time to cue the climate change lockdowns? <laughs> Meanwhile, uh, the CDC just issued a warning about deadly bacteria that's coming up from the Gulf Coast. And according to this warning, this deadly bacteria has a 50% fatality rate. Oh, sure, there's only been a few confirmed cases of infection of the, uh, from this bacteria so far, and yet the warning still must go out because, you know, people's immune systems don't seem to be what they used to be, right? Meanwhile, p police body cam footage from Las Vegas just captured the images of some sort of mysterious event as uh, what appears to be a UFO crashes to the earth, and shortly thereafter, nearby residents reported encounters with unusually tall, non-human beings. And while the American Meteor Society confirmed several reports in California, Nevada, and Utah of a bright flash in the sky, uh, there were also reports of black SUVs in, in this neighborhood that possibly took some sort of aircraft away. And it sort of sounds like the days of Noah are beginning to take place as giant aliens appear to be roaming the earth. Uh, you might also like to know that According to the reports, NASA's Parker Solar Probe has successfully ventured through solar wind for the very first time. And, and as the data of this groundbreaking mission was analyzed by scientists, they're now issuing warnings about the potential impact of a solar storm which could strike the Earth within the next decade. And, and seeing how the radiation of this storm could knock out satellites and power lines, they're warning us that a solar storm of this magnitude could create an internet apocalypse, which would stop us from, you know, watching internet influencers helping us to know what we ought to be supporting today. Now, with all this in mind, I can't help but to remember the warning that the Lord Jesus presented during his Olivet Discourse. It's in Luke chapter 21. There he describes the day when there will be signs in the sun, in the moon, and in the stars, and on the earth, distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for, from fear, and the expectation of those things which are coming on the earth for the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Wow. So according to the Lord Jesus, there's coming a day when the hearts of men will fail them. In other words, uh, courage will give way to cowardice as the people on this planet are terrified by the things that are coming upon the earth. And as we consider the way that the hearts of men will begin to fail them, you know, I can't help but to wonder if this also includes, you know, the rising number of heart inflammation cases that have been recorded since the vaccine rollout. Uh, according to the data from the CDC, heart inflammation cases have been higher than normal here in the U.S. and ever since the rollout of Pfizer and Moderna's safe and effective COVID-19 vaccines. And according to one report, these heart issues occurred mostly in males between the ages of 12 and 39 shortly after receiving the second dose of the vaccine. So we really shouldn't be surprised to learn that men's hearts are going to fail from fear as they begin to see the things that are coming upon the earth in the last days. In order to further grasp this fear, I should remind you about the battle which is going to take place during the time of tribulation. You see, it's in Revelation chapter 12 where the Apostle John records this vision by, by declaring this, and I quote, War broke out in heaven. Michael and his angels fought with the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought, but they did not prevail, nor was place found for them in heaven any longer. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old, called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. In other words, it's during the time of tribulation when the angels uh, of the Lord, they're going to battle and, and defeat the devil and his demons. And it's at that point in time when the devil and his demons are going to be cast down to earth. And, and I'm, I'm guessing that it's at that point in time when the devil will begin to make personal appearances at the after-school Satan clubs. <laughs> but seriously, there's no doubt in my mind that these fallen angels will continue to masquerade as aliens as they continue to, de to deceive those who, uh, who are rejecting the truth. 
I believe that this is actually the day that Paul was describing in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. It's there where he declares this, and I quote, The coming of the lawless one is according to the working of Satan with all power, signs, and lying wonders, and with all unrighteous deception among those who perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they should believe the lie that they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. Now with this in mind, I can't help but to wonder, will this strong delusion include the unrighteous deception that fallen angels are actually aliens from some other world? And if so, then it seems to me that many people will welcome them as heroes before they realize that they've been duped with doctrines of demons. Thankfully for us, the born-again believer has been given authority over these evil spirits, and in order to prove my point, I should remind you about the promise that the Lord Jesus presented in Luke chapter 10. It's there where he declares, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents, on scorpions, and over uh, all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Nevertheless, do not think nor do not rejoice in this, that the spirits are subject to you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Christian, listen, we've been given power over the devil and his demons. That's right. We've been given the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. And with that being the case, we don't need to worry about the devil. We don't need to worry about his demons. We don't need to worry about those that are masquerading as aliens from other planets. And, and at the same time, though, the Lord Jesus encouraged us to not so much rejoice in that, but rather to, to you know, rejoice in the fact that our names are found in heaven. The true benefit of believing in Jesus Christ is found in the fact that our names are written on the registry there in heaven. In other words, our names are found in the Lamb's book of life. And what this means is that every born-again believer has already become a citizen of our Savior's eternal kingdom. What this means is that those who have placed their faith in the Lord Jesus ought to be looking forward to the day when we will finally enter a heavenly country where the King of Kings will rule in righteousness. And with this as the focus, I encourage you to embrace the instructions that the Apostle Peter presented in, in his first epistle. It's actually found in 1 Peter chapter 2. It's verses 11 and 12 where Peter declares this, and I quote, Beloved, I beg you as sojourners and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul, having your conduct honorable among the Gentiles, that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may, by your good works, which they observe, glorify God in the day of his visitation. Christian, listen. Rather than living for the fleshly lusts, which war against our own soul, let's become Christians who are conducting ourselves in an honorable way, as we set out to serve our Savior here in these last days. And as we do this, listen, the King of Kings is going to help us so that we can continue to fight the good fight of faith and all for the glory of God.